Welcome to Obsidian for Tabletop RPGs. Let's learn how to use the tool. Alright, g'day guys and welcome back tonight to another Obsidian video. This is going to be a second part of the CLI series, so if, if you haven't seen my last video on uh, the introduction to the uh, TTRPG Fantasy CLI tool, alright, we went through how to use the 5th edition SRD, you should go back and watch that, alright, because I'm not going to cover that content again, so go through, watch that, and then come back to this video. Assuming you have seen that video, we're going to jump in tonight into how to add some new sources to the CLI command. Now, there's a few ways to do this, um, and the easy way is to just adjust the command. So let's go ahead and show you how to do that. Now, the first thing to consider is where is my command? All right, because you can obviously go back and watch my video again, and you can read the README document, but I'll give you a pro tip, guys store your command because you're going to be making changes to it. And what do I mean by that? All right, so over here we have the CLI process. Right? We spoke about how we should have that in a folder and not touch it. That's why I've actually got a, uh, a lock icon on mine to remind myself, hey Josh, don't touch these notes. Uh, that's just done with the icon folder um, plugin, by the way. But inside of here, I've actually created a note called CLI command, and that's where I keep my command. Now, as you can see here, my command is quite extensive and it could be a little bit scary for someone who's looking at this for the first time. Don't worry, most of it, uh, we're not gonna certainly cover in this video, but most of it is very simple. Uh, we'll probably go through that in a third video, but you can see the top bit here is actually the section which is the command that I run. All right, so let's just grab that out. We'll come over here to a new notepad and just paste that in. Okay, so now that I've got my code in my notepad, I want to learn how to modify it. What can I do? And the easiest way to answer that is obviously to go to the README. Uh, for that, I have literally just gone to Google and typed in Obsidian TTRPG CLI. Enter. All right, and it comes up with the front option there. So by Ubilient, all right, TTRPG-convert.cli, and it's on GitHub. We open that up, it'll look like this, and you can scroll down and see the README. This is a complex tool that can do a lot, guys. I highly recommend you spend some time with the README, all right? I always recommend you do that. Not many of you would actually do, as far as I can tell, so just, you know, it's a good tip. Read the README. <laughs> um, all right, as we scroll down here, though, we need to get to the bit that says, here it is, uh, use with uh, 5e tools JSON data. All right, and we can see down here, there's a section of code that says invoke the command again, this time including sources and custom items. We're just gonna copy that bit of code. All right, we're gonna bring it back to our notepad. And what we're specifically looking for is just the structure of the text, okay? And we can see here that this is effectively just a copy of the code. Now, there are some differences in mine. Um, it's worth calling out that I'm running on Windows, so I have a .exe. I've heard Apple users have some funny shenanigans going on and they don't have an exe. So depending on what you're running, you you know, you might, if you're not running Windows, get more value from the README, all right, than you're gonna get from me, because I'm doing this for Windows. Specifically though, what I'm interested in here is the dash S. I wanna use the dash S, all right? Now, let's just restore this. I'm gonna take that out. You don't have that yet, don't worry. We're gonna go through that in this video. Yours probably looks a lot more like this. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna copy the dash S and we're gonna put it in here. I'm gonna delete the skag and I'm gonna put MM. Now, what does this actually mean? Dash S is sources. The names are acronyms for the books, okay? And for anyone who remembers what we did last time, we put our CLI tool onto our hard drive. We went into fifth edition tools. We put a copy of the 5e tools site onto this folder here. If we go into that and go into the data folder, we can actually see there's a whole heap of stuff. Now, in this case here, I'm interested in um, probably B-Serie, all right? So I want the monster manual because I own the monster manual and I want a copy of the monster manual inside of Obsidian. Uh, very specific here, guys. Make sure you're using content that you do own. Um, I thought it was under MM. There it is. BCRE.MM. If we open that up, we can see the source is MM. All right, we're after that source. 
all right, that name, all right, it's just a, a tick tick. So Monster Manual MM makes sense. If we go back to here, we have a look at the other ones. We've got PHB, and guess what? That stands for the Player Handbook, and DMG is the Dungeon Master's Guide. So all books that I own, I've got a few copies of these actually across multiple devices and digital tools and physical copies. Um, but I'm going to, you know, tell the tool that I'd like copies of these. So we add the S, we go through and we add these here. All right, if we go back to my website, obsidianttrpgtutorials.com, you have a look here and you type CLI and you come down to the fifth edition version. I'm pretty sure there is a call out box down here that might be very useful. Where is it? Create a config sources. All right, you can drop this out and see the acronyms for all the different content that is available. I'll say it again, make sure you're only using content that you own. All right, we've added in the sources. We can now copy this and we can now go over to our uh, CLI folder. We'll go back to the bin folder. We're gonna type in the address bar, type CMD for command, run that. All right, we now have the command line running the uh, in the right folder. We right click to paste our new code and we press go. You can see this is kicking off. It's reading the data. It's finished reading the data. Now it's going to write the files and this should spin out very quickly, but it's going to include a heap more stuff. All right, done. We can now close that. We can have a look in our DM folder. Let's go into compendium and we can have a look at bestiary and you can see we've got lots and lots of options in here. So now it's made all of the monsters from the monster manual. Um, it's got, you know, pretty much everything we've asked it to do. Now we also asked it to make a player handbook. So let's just have a look here. What have we got? We got backgrounds. We got classes. All right, so it's added all of these extra sources and it's made these things for you. Now, you can do exactly what we did with the other video. You can now paste these into your vault. All right, I recommend you turn your vault off and do this and then turn your vault on. It will index those notes and then it will make those notes available. And this is certainly one way that you could manually go through when you run the source file and add these in. All right, so there we go. We've just gone through the process of how to modify the CLI, CLI command to add sources. And just a quick summary of the recap, it is quite as easy as adding, adding a dash S, here it is, a dash S into your line. Uh, I'm going to remove all of this again. All right, so you add a dash S space, uh, you have the name of the source or the, the acronym of the source that you want to use comma, second source, comma, third source, comma, fourth source, comma, keep going. All right, then at the end, there's no comma, but there's a space and then there's the data. All right, so you can copy that then into your vault, uh, sorry, into the CLI command and that's going to give you those sources. Now this is designed in this method to work with the official sources uh, from the 5e tools. It doesn't work with homebrew in this way. Um, we're gonna work on a third video next, which is gonna go into how to create a configuration file. Uh, then a fourth video I'm thinking on how to make templates and then a fifth video on how to use homebrew content. So hold on, this is going to become a bit of a series, but I think it's better that we break it down into compartments and modular pieces so that you guys can learn at your own speed um, because there's just too much to take in at one time. All right, so just high level summary, you're adding the dash S, you're adding your, your, um, your source acronyms and you're running that CLI command once you're done, you're putting it into your vault. Um, I just want to remind you all that the um, the README file does ob obviously exist. Um, and you know, just a reminder from my first video, there are CSS snippets and there are recommended plugins to use with these, all right? So make sure you've got those turned on. If your notes don't look right, it might be because you're missing one of these pieces, all right? So go back to my first video, watch that, and off we go. All right, anyway. Outside of that, uh, thank you for joining me. This has been the second video in the CLI process. Um, I just want to do a huge and massive shout out. Thank you to all of my patrons. Um, I'm obviously Josh and I make tutorial content for obsidian.md. 
Um, if you are new to my videos, you can jump over to obsidianttrpgtutorials.com and that's where you can find everything that I make about Obsidian. Um, specifically though, I highly recommend you jump into community and support. Jump down and you find the links to the community discord there. If you've got any questions, that is the place to go for any TTRPG related stuff. Um, if it's more of like a, a generic question, like say you're just trying to learn how to use data view or trying to learn how to use templater, then I highly recommend the actual official Discord server for Obsidian. There is a lot more people in there, like a lot more. Um, and they're very helpful. There's some wizards in there. They will be able to help you out with all sorts of the generic stuff. All right. So it's uh, certainly two communities, I guess you could say, but we all come together in lots of different places. And, you know, if you want general stuff, that's the place to go. Um, a huge and massive shout out to all of my patrons. Right? I just want to say thank you. Um, just a heads up, I have gone ahead and released the uh, new Patreon vault. Uh, the Patreon vault is designed as sort of a foundation vault for people to get started with Obsidian. All right? It's set up with the way I like to use the tool. All right? It's got my homepage, it's got my DM screens that I use, it's got buttons for creating notes, it's got automated data view stuff to pull notes from different places. All right, it's basically a foundation for you to start with. So if you're new to the tool, consider uh, signing up for Patreon. It's the cost of a coffee and you get access to my vault. Outside of that, my tutorial is all free for everyone to use. So no issues there. All right, that's it guys. I want to say a huge, massive thank you to you all. Thank you for watching. If you do enjoy my content, please do like and subscribe. And outside of that, I will speak to you on the socials.